A rugby team stranded in the Andes, what do people do when they have nowhere to go on an abandoned island? And one of the craziest cases of cannibalism I have ever heard of. We have all of this on today's most amazing top 10 list. Coming number 10, we have the rugby team plane crash. This is one of the most famous stories of people being stranded somewhere. This was back in the year 1972, and the story of it would be all over the news and talked about for years after the crash. There was a rugby team that was taking a flight in a small plane and it was flying over the Andes. They should have been able to make it all the way to their destination, but something malfunctioned on their plane. They ended up crashing and they were stuck in the freezing cold. This was back in the 70s, and the survivors of the crash were now stuck in the snowy mountains. Now the rescue teams had to first locate them and then come up with a plan to get them all out safely. This was going to take some time so for over 70 days the survivors of the crash were stuck up in the freezing mountains. After they were rescued some of the darker stories came out. There were 19 people who didn't survive the crash and the people who did survive had to turn to eating them so they didn't starve to death or freeze to death. This caused a lot of controversy and some people wanted them convicted for eating the non-survivors to stay alive. Personally, I think they did whatever they could to survive. Can you blame them for not wanting to die? It's easy to make claims about what they should have done from the comfort of your own home. Coming at number nine, we have Ada Blackjack. One of the wildest castaway stories I have ever heard in my life. For this story, we need to head back to the 1920s. It's wild to think that people had the confidence to try and conquer their wilderness way back then, before we even had the internet and hand warmers. But that's what Ada and her expedition team was trying to do. They went out to Wrangell Island. This was an island just north of Siberia. They were adventurers and they were hoping to find something new and exciting. Instead, they all got stranded and were now freezing cold and had no hope of escape. There were five of them, Ada and four other men. Three of the men went missing after one day when they went out to find some food and never came back. The fourth man got scurvy and slowly but surely passed away. Now Ada was all on her own, but she was a skilled hunter and naturalist. She ended up going out hunting and was able to survive in the wild for two years before she was rescued. The crazy part about this story is that when she came back, she was famous for her survival but didn't like the attention, so she ended up moving back to the Arctic and living out there until she passed away from old age in her 80s. And guys, make sure you hit that like button because it really helps us out. Coming in at number eight, we have the Donner Party. People have been on the menu more than once. Back in the year 1864 is when we have the story of the famous Donner Party. They were trying to cross America and they were going to do it through the famous Hastings Cutoff. This was a pass that should have saved them 400 miles and allowed them to make it all the way to their destination before winter struck. But they were wrong. The party ended up getting stuck in the mountains and they had to eat each other to stay alive. In the end, only half of the people on the trip survived. Next on the list, we have Philip Ashton. Here's a story from things going from bad to worse. The story of Philip Ashton starts in the year 1722. This guy is trying to work as a sailor off the coast of Nova Scotia. Honest work for an honest man. Well, there were a couple of people out there who wanted to take advantage of this working man and those people were pirates. They saw Philip's boat out in the open and they chased it down and then took all the people on board as prisoners. Philip was now stuck working as a captive of these pirates. That doesn't seem like the sailor's dream that he wanted. After nine months working as an unpaid intern for these pirates, he saw his chance to escape. He would make a run for it when the ship was docked and the thing about pirates is they don't really care about their slaves. So after a short search, they let him go. But now he had some of new problems. He was on an island with nothing but the clothes on his back. He now had to survive until he was saved, which wouldn't happen till 16 months later. He was able to survive off of turtle eggs and fruit. Next on the list, we have Julianne Kopek. Being the sole survivor of a plane crash would be one of the scariest things that could happen to you. You would be stuck in the wilderness and have nowhere to turn. You would have to find a way to survive without the help of anyone. I think if I was stuck in this situation, I wouldn't make it very far. I have zero survival skills, but Julianne had the skills to pay the bills and was able to fight for her survival. She was on a plane flying over the Amazon. The plane was hit by lightning and then it came crashing down to the earth. She was the only one who survived. When she woke up from the crash, she had a broken collarbone and she could only see out of one of her eyes. She had no idea where she was, but she did have some basic survival skills. She knew that if she followed water down,
downstream, it would most likely be able to lead her to civilization. So she found a river and then started walking. She walked for nine straight days with zero sleep. This was partly because she was too injured to fall asleep, but also because bugs had worked their way into her wounds and now were eating away at her constantly. Eventually, she came to a boat that was tied off on the side of the river. This is where more of her survival skills came into play. She took gasoline that was on the boat and poured it into her wounds. This caused the bugs to squirm out of her body, and then she passed out in the boat. She was later found and rushed to the hospital and survived. Next on the list, we have the narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym of Nantucket. This is probably the most famous story told by Edgar Allan Poe. This is where a ship full of men are out sailing and end up stranded on an island, and they were all forced to make a decision. They could either starve to death and watch each one of them waste away, or they could eat one of the people who was stranded with them and potentially live long enough to make it off the island. This is an exciting book, so I bet you can guess that they went with eating one of their crewmates. Now, it's not the desperation of cannibalism that made this book so famous. What really blew people's minds was that 50 years after the book was written, there was a shipwreck where the men on board ended up in the same situation and they ate one of their crewmates to survive. Now, the name of that man who was eaten in the book was the same name as the guy who got eaten in real life. And since it was a book that was written by Edgar Allan Poe, the man who was famous for his morose literature, it made the story that much creepier. Next on the list, we have Lean Dirt Hassan Bush. This is one of the scariest things that could happen to you as a sailor back before things were a little bit more civilized. But for this story, we got to shoot back to the year 1725 and find a guy who was trying to live his life, but the people around him weren't really into that. Hashen Bush was caught for committing sodomy. Basically, he was a gay man and was caught and prosecuted for it. This was all while he was on board a ship. Back then, when they would catch you for something like this, you would be casted off and left somewhere to die. Hassan Bush was left on an island to die all on his own, and that was the last time anyone reported seeing him. Years later, someone explored the island and they came across his diary, but his body was never found. Based on what it said in his diary, it would seem that he was on the island for about six months. The way he could have survived could have been from drinking turtle blood, and maybe he was clever enough to have caught a seal or a sea lion for some meat, blood, and blubber. Now, because his body was never found, there's a chance that he was able to make it off the island. He might have been able to signal a passing ship for them to come save him. Next on the list, we have Chonosuke Matsuyama. Once again, we're in the 1700s, and this time it's a fishing boat in Japan that would get the worst of it. There were 43 men on board during a storm, which caused them to be stranded on a beach. There were no supplies, food, or water, and eventually every man succumbed to the elements. The wild part about this story is that Matsuyama took the time to record everything that happened to the men on pieces of wood. He then put these pieces of wood into a bottle and threw them into the ocean. 150 years after he wrote them down, they were found by someone from the village he grew up in. Next on the list, we have Alexander Selkirk. Man, if there's anything I'm learning from this list, it's that you don't want to be a sailor back in the 1700s. It would seem that there would be a pretty good chance that you could end up stranded somewhere. It would have been much easier to be a cobbler or something and just make shoes. But there were some people who didn't really have a choice and had to set sail to the seas to pay the bills. And for Alexander Selkirk, things didn't really go as planned. His crewmates would turn against him and he didn't just get timed out. They left him on an island to die. That's a little extra if you ask me. Well, joke's on them because he didn't die. Selkirk was a master survivalist. He spent his first while on the beach eating shellfish to survive, but then he was forced into the jungles when sea lions came. Turns out one man is no match for an army of sea lions, so now he had to find a new way to eat and live. Lucky for him, there were wild goats he could chase down and milk and eat. But now there was a new challenge. At night when he would try to sleep, he would be attacked by rats, so he came up with a new plan. There were also wild cats on the island, so he would offer them milk and food to keep them around. The cats would go around and hunt the rats for him, and he lived on this island for four years until he was saved. And coming at the number one spot, we have Hugh Glass, the man who the famous movie The Revenant was based off of, the one that finally got Leo his Oscar. The story takes place back in 1823. Hugh was hunting and was attacked by a bear. The creature 
almost killed him, but he was able to take it down before it took his life. But he was in brutal shape. The crew he was with stationed a couple men to look over him until he died so they could give him a proper burial. But they just left him because they were sure he was a goner. Well, they were dead wrong. Stranded and wounded, Hugh crawled for six days weeks eating berries and letting maggots get into his wounds so they could clean them. Can you imagine the look on their faces when the guy who they left for dead seemingly came back from the dead? Ooh, they must have been a little bit shocked. All right, guys, that has been our list. I've been your host, Chater Reyna, and we'll catch you on the next one. <laughs>